And this video is going to look at the Munich Putsch, which was Hitler's attempt to forcibly take over the government uh, from the Weimar government. So your starter today is to think about what you know about this flag. Now, I'm sure you've all seen it before. So does anyone know the name or maybe anyone able to tell us about the colour choices? Just pop it into the chat. So you're going to pause the video, do the date, title and the task in the chat box, please. So we have four key words that we're going to need to know today. A putsch is an attempted takeover of the government. Bolsheviks are members of the Russian Social Democratic Party, uh, followers of Lenin. They're basically communists in Russia. The SS are Hitler's private bodyguards and the SA is the Nazi's private army. Now, you do need to know the difference between the two. The way I remember it is SA, A for army, so that might help you. So go ahead, pause the video and get down your key terms. So we're going to have a very brief overview of what the Munich Putsch was, and then you guys are going to watch a video to just make sure we've covered all the key themes for the lesson, uh, so you're familiar with the terminology before we go through it. So the Munich Putsch, uh, Munich is a city in Germany, and a putsch, as we've just discovered, is a coup where you overthrow the government. Therefore, the Munich Putsch is where Hitler attempts to overthrow the government in Munich particularly uh, in a beer hall, which is kind of like a pub. So that's how it starts off, uh, and that's how it ends. Uh, it doesn't end well for Hitler. It's a complete failure. Uh, he ends up getting arrested uh, and even shot in the shoulder. So he tries to overthrow the government, but it doesn't work. Now, there are several reasons for the Munich Putsch that your scheme of work wants you to know about. The first is that Hitler personally hated the Weimar government, the Weimar Republic, and so did a lot of people. So that's kind of the main reason to want to overthrow, I guess, any government, but particularly in this case, the German government. You've also got the uh, French had invaded the Ruhr at this point, which was massively embarrassing. Like France had basically taken over part of Germany and there was nothing they could really do about it. Hitler had more support than the Weimar government, or at least so he believed. And the Nazi party is growing, so it is an increasingly popular political party. Hyperinflation has also been harming the German economy. He thinks he has the support of Gustav von Kahr, who is leader of Bavaria. We'll talk more about him later on. He knew that the SA, the private army, would support him because they were his private army. Uh, General Ludendorff, support of Hitler. The Treaty of Versailles was generically hated by everyone. So you're going to need to get these down. Are you probably going to want a subheading as well? And you just need to explain why it would lead to a putsch. So why does this lead to Hitler trying to overthrow the government? Okay, so this is a video for you guys to watch. It goes through loads of things about the events before, during and after the Munich Putsch. So it kind of covers everything in about 10 minutes. Uh, this is a really good clip just to get you in the frame of mind for learning about the Munich Putsch. So if your teacher's feeling nice, they might put the link to this in the chat box and you can always ask them politely if they've forgotten. So the main events, uh, and you guys are going to need to get these down, are as follows. So Hitler gains popularity by denouncing or saying how bad the Treaty of Versailles was, and that massively increases party membership. But on the 28th of July 1921, Hitler was elected chairman of the Nazi party. If you remember last lesson, we learned about a man called Drexler, 
who like created the Nazi party effectively, uh, yeah, he gets kicked out and Hitler replaces him. And in the end of October 1922, Mussolini takes over Italy. Now, this is just kind of a side note, because Mussolini is the same kind of political alliance as Hitler. He's a national socialist. And Hitler sees Mussolini forcibly take over Italy and thinks, oh, well, maybe I can do the same thing. On the 26th of September 1923, Gustav von Kahr becomes leader of Bavaria, which is just a German state. On the 8th of November 1923, Hitler and 600 Nazis marched to the Bürgerbräukeller, where Kahr was having a meeting. It was a very important meeting. Uh, Kahr is very significant in um, the running of Bavaria. Kahr is forced from the beer hall at gunpoint, so Hitler points a gun at him. Hitler forces Kahr, von Schleiser and von Lossau, who also helped rule Bavaria, to accept Hitler's takeover. Now he's hoping kind of once he's claimed Bavaria for his own then surely the entirety of Weimar will fall at his feet. But he makes perhaps the most significant event in early uh, modern German history is he allows them to go home. Yeah you don't take people at gunpoint and then, oh yeah, you can just nip home for dinner. It's not what happens. Um, so they're allowed to go free and they, of course, immediately go and ring for help. And particularly a man called Franz Matt, he rings the army and the police to come and help this, uh, put down this takeover. Which is exactly what happens. So Hitler tries to march his men uh, anyway, to try and take over the rest of Weimar, but they're armed with only 2,000 rifles, which, I mean, if I was going to take over a government, I would probably need a lot more weapons than 2,000 guns. And they're met with 130 police officers. And there was a big shootout between the two sides, so obviously the police and the army trying to protect Weimar and Hitler trying to take over Weimar. Uh, and 16 Nazis and four policemen are killed. And the result for Hitler is that he is shot in the shoulder, uh, he's arrested two days later, and he's sentenced to five years in prison. But he only serves nine months, and we'll look at why momentarily. And while in prison, he writes a very famous book called Mein Kampf, which literally translates as My Struggle, uh, and it's all about his philosophy. And of course, after this attack on German democracy, the Nazi party is banned. So you can no longer be in the Nazi party at this point. Okay, so you're going to need to pause the video. You, if you want a little subheading, maybe just events of the Munich Putsch, then that would be great and get down those bullet points. glance the Munich Putsch does seem like an epic fail and yes in terms of what Hitler wanted to achieve it doesn't work but that doesn't mean it's wasted uh, you guys I imagine by now know a fair bit about Hitler and he's quite clever he's quite resourceful so what he does is even though it should have been a massive public embarrassment, his party's banned, uh, he's been shot, he hasn't got any support. Um, he does go to trial, which is where you are kind of accused of a crime and judge whether you're guilty or innocent. But this trial isn't like a normal trial, it basically turns into the Hitler show. Because what he does is he uses this trial to make many, many speeches. And actually, the judge allows it because he likes Hitler's views. Uh, the judge isn't meant to allow uh, anything that goes against the government or anything like that. It wouldn't be kind of in their roles, like it wouldn't be correct for them to do that. But this judge allows Hitler to speak uh, and he calls out the communists. Uh, he talks about how bad the Weimar are, he talks about how the Jews are ruining everything in the world, um, and for a long time. And the newspapers publish everything he says. And the result of all of these speeches is that by the end of Hitler's trial, he is a famous name. 
people will be discussing Hitler at pretty much every single dinner table in Germany. So just bear that in mind a moment. Um, I'm going to come back to this for our final task. But if you wouldn't mind, again, doing a little subtitle and getting those points down, uh, again, feel free to shorten this. You can definitely shorten these bullet points. So the other thing to come out of Hitler's um, arrest, and he is put in prison. Uh, he's sentenced to five months, but he only uh, sorry sentenced to five years, but only serves nine months. Uh, but he does accomplish another significant thing. He publishes that book called Mein Kampf, which you can see on the right. And in it are four key themes that are going to be constantly referred back to through this entire Germany unit. So they're really important things to know, and I'm sure you've already worked out some of them anyway. So one of the first things Hitler talks about is what's known as a Volksgemeinschaft, which just translates as people's community. And all that means is that there will be a group of strong races, the Aryan, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Germans, that will effectively conquer the smaller, weaker races like the Jews. You've got the second point, which is to get rid of the Treaty of Versailles uh, at whatever cost. So get rid of the reparations, get rid of the blame clause, uh, build up the army again. All of that is in this book. As well as Hitler wanting to get more Lebensraum or living space. Uh, and all that means is just land and resources for this giant people's community, because you know, you've got to feed people. So that's what Lebensraum is all about. Uh, and of course, to get rid of all Jews. So your scheme of work does require to, you to know what Mein Kampf is and these four key themes. So you're going to want to do another subheading. Uh, and if you didn't know that Mein Kampf translated as my struggle, I suggest you put that as the subheading too. And then obviously those blue points for me, please. So I'm going to ask you a bit of a strange question now. Uh, you guys know I like strange questions by now. Um, I'm asking you, was the Munich Putsch a fail or a success? And you must choose one. You cannot say it was both. I want to know, do you think the Munich Putsch worked for Hitler. So you're going to type this into the chat box. Uh, so make sure it is a full sentence. So do you think the Munich Putsch was a fail or a success for Hitler? And why? I need a reason. And once you've done that, don't forget to go and do the show my homework quiz three times. And that is it for this session. Bye.